true allegiance on the nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Supervisor Vecchio? Here. Councilman McCarthy? Here. Councilman Wareheim? Here. Councilman Creighton? Here. Councilwoman Newark? Okay, tonight the first public hearing is to consider citizen input on the five-year annual plans for the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program for program year that begins January 1st, 2015. Mr. Supervisor, members of the town board, ladies and gentlemen of the public, my name is Elaine Lernard. I'm a principal planner in the planning department. The purpose of today's hearing is to consider the five-year and annual plans for the town's Section 8 Rental Assistance Program, <coughs> now known as the Housing Choice Voucher Program, for the program year beginning January 1st, 2015. The town's Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program is operated <coughs> in compliance with the HUD regulations and with the town's previously approved administrative documents. The five-year and annual plans under consideration today are in keeping with those regulations and with previously adopted documents. Board members have a copy of the plan document before you. Our program has been rated high performing and can therefore follow a streamlined format, so the document is only three pages long. The plans propose no fundamental changes in the program. The plans do incorporate the operational elements necessary to comply with the 2009 court settlement. Plans have been available, uh, available for public review since February 27th, and all Section 8 participants were invited to a meeting of a resident advisory board to discuss the plans. Given that there have been no requests for changes in the plans during the comment period, we recommend that the board adopt the plans as soon as practicable. There is a proposed resolution to approve the plans for your consideration on the agenda for tonight's board meeting. That concludes my presentation, and I would be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Anybody in the audience wish to be heard on this matter? If not, I'll close the meeting. Second. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. Next public hearing is for the town board to consider amending chapter 322 of the zoning code of the town of Smithtown regarding fees. Good evening, Mr. Supervisor and members of the town board. For the record and for the public, my name is David Flynn. I'm the assistant town planning director. The reason I'm here to, to, to uh, the reason I am here tonight is to explain uh, at this public hearing the recommendation for the town board to consider amending the zoning ordinance to increase the fees with respect to site plans, uh, Board of Zoning Appeals matters, and change of zone matters. In a nutshell, it's been four to 16 years since the fees have been changed and costs have increased in, the, at, in that time in that uh, salaries, fringe benefits, um, the increasing complexity of cases, the additional numbers of uh, kinds of laws that have been adopted and so forth have increased the costs. So the goal of the uh, details of the uh, amendment are to basically make the fee structure fairer, to help defray the cost of permit applications, and to simplify uh, the fee structure. That concludes my summary. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay, but, but, but can you go into what you're talking about with the fees? Do you have the, uh, the fee changes? I'm sorry, what about the fee changes? Can you list those? Uh, sure. or, or are there too many? There are, there are many. I, I can go through them. No, you don't have to then. Um, so it's just increasing fees on certain permits? Uh, yeah, correct. Okay. Anyone wish to be heard on this? I'll move to close the meeting. Thank you. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilwoman Nowak? Okay, the next public hearing is to uh, 
consider, amend, consider amend, amending chapter 268-48, subdivision of land regarding definitions and fees. <clears throat> Good evening again, Mr. Supervisor and members of the town board. Um, again, my name is David Flynn. I'm the assistant town planning director. And the purpose of this public hearing is for the town board to listen to public comment regarding uh, a proposal to increase the fees in the subdivision regulations of the zoning ordinance. Uh, I'm sorry, the subdivision regulations, chapter 248 of the town code. Um, similar to the other public hearing, the purpose of the recommendation has to do with the fees have not been changed in the past 16 years and costs of processing applications have gone up in that time frame. So the purpose of the fee increase is to reduce um, the cost to the taxpayer, basically to help defray the cost of processing applications to make them easier to apply and to make them more fair. One um, initiative in this is to create an incentive for developers to cluster development. And in that situation where the town uh, wishes the development to be clustered in order to preserve uh, open space or natural resources, the fees would be significantly lower. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. No, but I, I do you think it might be fair if you uh, said what those fee increases are? Sure. This one oh. is sh shorter. <coughs> the other one dealt with three parts of the zoning ordinance. Okay, the fee for a preliminary layout changes from $400 to $600 plus on a per lot basis from $175 to $600. And then the, the fee on a preliminary uh, for industrial property is changes from $500 to $1,000. Correct. Correct. Per acre. The, um, the portion having to do with R6 is uh, R6 B, R6 B. Oh, I'm sorry. The R6 zoning ordinance is eliminated because it's included in the definition of the basic umbrella <laughs> of fees. The ch recommended change for the fees for finals is to increase it from $400 to $600 plus on a per lot basis from 100 to 600. The um, overall projected estimated increase is, is not 500%, uh, but we're estimating that it will end up being about 20, 25% increase. And then um, in an industrial property on a per acre basis, instead of $400, we're recommending that it be $750. <coughs> For extensions of approval, we're recommending that the fees be changed from $150 to $250. For uh, variances, um, just, there would be a fee of $500 per variance, um, except where the variances are necessary for an open space subdivision, and that's defined um, uh, proposed to be defined in an earlier page on the proposal. The fees on um, what we commonly call uh, 280A applications, but technically it's called uh, for a building permit on an unimproved file map street, instead of a, a flat fee of $400, we're recommending that it be $10 per linear foot of unimproved street. So that way, in essence, uh, the larger the project, in theory, the more complicated the application, the more expensive it is to review, and therefore um, the fee should be higher. W with respect to amending filed map lot lines, the recommendation is to increase the fee from $250 to $500. And that's all of them. Okay, thank you. Anybody who wish to be heard on this? I move to close the meeting. Second. 
Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes. No, do you want to read? by the supervisors. Supervisor hereby appoints Cicero Burke to the Youth Advisory Board the term of April 24, 2015 through December 31st, 2017. On the correspondence, we have a special event, St. James Chamber of Commerce, St. James Day, a parade run walk permit for John W. Cook, VFW Post 395, parade run walk Smithtown 350 year celebration parade, Number four, special event, weekly farmers market, Kings Park. Number five, special event, Kings Park, Chamber of Commerce, Kings Park Day Festival. And number six, parade run walk, Comac Coalition for the Caring 5K run walk. I'm assuming those are the first readings? Uh, the first four are second readings, and five and six are first readings. Yeah. Okay, so one through four are second readings. Second reading. Number five is the first reading. And so is number six. And number six, first reading. Okay. Advertise for public hearing, item number one. Town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for public hearing to be held at the Eugene A. Canataro Senior Center, Smithtown, New York, on May 21st, 2015 at 7 p.m. to consider amending chapter 322 of the town code regarding the Hop Hog Industrial Park Overlay District. Councilwoman Newark? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vick? Yes. Item number two, the town board to authorize town clerk to advertise for a public hearing to be held at the Eugene A. Cantaro Senior Citizen Center, Smithtown, New York, on the 21st day of May, 2015, at 7 p.m., to consider amending the building zone map as so it includes certain land in the Hub Industrial Park Overlay District, HIP. Councilwoman Newark? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vick? Yes. On the resolutions, item number one, the town board to authorize the town clerk to advertise for the following bids to be returned to Town Hall 99 West Main Street, Smithtown, New York, at 11 a.m. on the dates indicated, bid number 15-029, street lighting material, May 14, 2015. Councilman Minoak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vega? Yes. Item number two, the town board to award the following bids and to authorize the purchase of the associated goods and services as per 2A through G. Bid number 15-020 for GPS hardware and software. Bid number 15-022 for arts and crafts supply. Bid number 15-023 for supporting goods. Bid number 15-019 for mobile radios. E, bid number 15-009 for concrete curb sidewalks and aprons to laser industries. F, bid number 15-025 for Portland cement powder. And G, bid number 15-026 for sod to green lawn sods and bright cliff sod. That's for bid openings. Councilwoman Newark? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Okay. Item number three, the town board to approve the following as for three A through N. Town board regular night meeting of March 19th, minutes. Town clerk to issue a special Event parade permit to St. James Chamber of Commerce. Town clerk to issue a special permit to the Long Island Green Market. <coughs> Town clerk to issue a run walk permit to John W. Cook, VFW. Town clerk to issue a parade run walk permit to Smithtown 350 Foundation. Supervisor Patrick Arvecchio's appointment of Cicero Burke to the Youth Advisory Board term April 24, 2015 to 2017, December 31st. Rescission of resolution 2015-225. Extension of professional services agreement with Green and Pedersen Inc. for GIS management and the New York State DEC mandated drainage inventory program. I. Rejection of all bids received February 19, 2015, in conjunction with bid number 15-003 for demolition of an unsafe structure. J. Donald P. Mustang and Catherine Core to attend a GFOA Long Island seminar. K. Adoption of Local Law Number 1-2015 to add new chapter of the Code of Town of Smithtown titled Chapter 57A, Bid Awards Based on Best Value, as for public hearing held on April 7, 2015, secret dated April 9, 2015, and pursuant to the recommendation of the town attorney. L. Sole source repair to a Caterpillar loader. M. Town attorney to enter into stipulation of settlement with the Civil Service Employee, Inc. And employee number. 2305090501 in lieu of section 75 charges and adoption of section 8 PHA plan. 
Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I have number four, town board to do study and deliberation of subject record to issue a secret negative declaration determination of non-significance in the following matters reason. As per 4A special acceptance petition 2015-03 Long Island Sports Arena. Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. I had number five, the town board to approve, 5A, town board to approve zoning matter 2014 is submitted by Hadenton Company, LLC, for change of zone from WSI to NB. For property located on the south side of New York State Route 347, 1180 feet southwest of Alexander Avenue. As per the 5A, the printed agenda. Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Becky? Yes. 5B, the town board to approve zoning petition 2014-0C as submitted by Sun Enterprise Inc. for a change of zone from R21, residential single family to minimum lot 21,780 feet to NB for property located on the south side of New York State Route 347, 910 feet southwest of Alexander Avenue as per the printed agenda 5B. <coughs> Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Becky? Yes. Item number 5C, the town board to approve zoning petition number 2014-06 as submitted by Crescent Associate LLC for relief of conditions of a previous zone change number 94-3 for the property located on the north side of New York State Route 25 and the south side of New York State Route 347 as for the print of the agenda 5C. Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. On the LWRP. 6A, the town board to issue a written consistency determination pursuant to chapter 151 of the town code that application 2014-05 is consistent with the LWRP subject to conditions as stated in the April 21st, 2015 memorandum from the assistant town planning director. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Item number seven, the town board to authorize the controller to execute the following. As for 7A through L, various transfers and increase in revenue codes. Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town Board to authorize supervisors to execute the following in a form approved by the town attorney as per 8A through F, an agreement with Suffolk County, an agreement with Civic Plus, renewal of agreement, agreements with the village ahead of the Harbor Branch in Nessequag. Intermunicipal agreement with Suffolk County and agreement with residents of Nessaquag Point Beach. Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Item number nine, the town board to approve settlement in the following matters for recommendation of the town attorney is 9A and B, $1,589.30 and $312.99. Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. On the personnel, town board to approve the following personnel matters as per 10A through I, the printed agenda, seasonal appointments, part-time appointments, seasonal appointments and reappointments, seasonal appointments, full-time appointment, seasonal and reappointments, full-time, seasonal appointments, and termination. Councilwoman Noak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes, I have two additional yeah. resolutions which are not on the printed agenda. <coughs> The town board to approve a partial award of an RFP for concession sales at town facilities to town of Summer, Evel Girand, Hakan Yeldrum, Omar Dusan, Palmer Florentino, and On the Hook Bay Company as proposals received on March 26, 2015. Further authorize the supervisor to sign the agreements. Councilwoman Noak. Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Town board to approve the transfer from DR account, contingency account in the amount of 100000 and transfer to the road maintenance account in the amount of $100,000 to the highway department. Councilwoman Nowak? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. That concludes resolutions. Those wishing to be heard, starting with Bernadette, and I'm sorry I can't read the last name. Please come up.
Hello, I'm Bernadette Barron. I'm a nurse practitioner here in Smithtown. I actually have an office that I lease right on Main Street. And what I want to talk to you about, Mr. Vecchio, today is what's happening with the, uh, the shelter, the animal shelter. Apparently, there's a Facebook page, uh, Smithtown Animal Shelter Needs Change. And on that Facebook page, there's um, a video and, you know, about these. I was under the impression that the animal shelter is a no kill unless the animal's sick. But apparently in August 2012, there were 28 cats killed. And there's a story about a particular cat named Comet on this Facebook page. It's very disturbing to me. And I'm wondering, you know, what has been done about this to George Beatty, who is the in charge over there? I don't know the answer to that question. What has been done for, for having... What has been done, what's for getting done? having euthanized the 28, did you say 28 was the number? That's correct. Um, well, I don't know that he did anything wrong, but I have... Uh, would Councilwoman know, know about that? Uh, that mm -hmm. is being investigated because there was a complaint. Is that right, town attorney? Yes, sir. That's being investigated by the town attorney. Uh, if your question is what is being done about Mr. Beatty, Correct. Uh, in the last few meetings, the supervisor had explained to some of the uh, public that came here to speak that a formal complaint must be registered with the town attorney. And at that time, once the complaint is registered, it will go to public safety for investigation, which is happening uh, whenever there is a complaint. As far as Mr. Beatty, he is uh, part of the SAG union. And uh, we, as a board, have no power to dismiss anybody without a full hearing, which he has a right to under his SAG agreement. He has sure. to, if, if, if the investigation proves that something has been done. So then we're waiting on a date? Uh, well, a date or an investigation, I would say. The investigation. Yeah. If, if your question is about Mr. Beatty. Yes. Because there is also a video on this Midtown Animal Shelter Needs Change of Mr. Beatty getting into his car at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, driving particularly to a bar, and then leaving the bar. So what's been done about that? That's been investigated, and Mr. Beatty is not to be found in violation of anything. <clears throat> Even, oh, so he like took the day off and went took to Took the work. afternoon off, yes. Took the afternoon off. Okay, and lastly, um, also on this Midtown Animal Shelter Needs Change Facebook page, uh, Mr. Vecchio, on this video, there's a video of you calling women in general wackos. Oh, that's not true. Well, it's a there's a video on this Facebook well, page. You know, I go back to my mother who said, uh, don't believe everything you read in the papers. No, I saw okay. a video. Well, I know that. I'm going to say then the new adage would be, don't believe everything you see on a video. Okay? It's a video. It's, it's live. Well, I don't think I, dis I uh, disparaged women. So maybe you read that wrong. Well, listen, I didn't read it. I you saw the video. You listened to it wrong. I didn't it's very anyone. clear. I would love it if you, any of you could go to that <clears throat> Facebook page and okay. look at the video and see for yourself as a professional woman who <clears throat> works in Smithtown and takes care of people <clears throat> in Smithtown. It's very insulting to me. Well, it should to, be. And it should be. But I can tell you that you ought to look at it again. I didn't disparage any women. Again. Again. Okay. The lawyer, look at the <clears throat> Facebook page and see what is on there. It's a video. It, you can hear it. You can see it. I don't think so. You know, I don't think it's so. It's extremely insulting. I, okay, listen. Well, let's have some order, okay? I don't think I disparage women, okay? Okay. Okay. So I just want to know, because this video is live, and it's insulting to me, and I need to know what's being done about it. Being done about what? Can the attorney please, can you please look at the video and you know, help me out here? I don't want to feel that the town supervisor is calling women wackos. It's oh, very that's, insulting. 
No, that's very different. Professional that's, woman. That's very different, isn't it? Can you please, <coughs> lawyer, would you please look at the video? That's very Wait, different than what I you said. Excuse me? I did, I didn't, I was heard saying there were wackos in the audience. Women. No, I did not. Maybe I did, but, did, but I've apologized for that. Oh, okay. Okay. So you've apologized for that. I did apologize okay. for that, yes. Okay. Okay. Mm. Sure. Because later on, uh, uh, other than Direct Abiti, later on I'd like to uh, give you a list of some of the things that are being done for the shelter. Great. Uh, we'll do that later on, but we'll sure. let everybody speak. Thank you. Thank you. Bill Nussbaum. Bill Nussbaum. <clears throat> I'm hearing uh, improvements are being made at the shelter as far as uh, cosmetics and uh, food, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm going to draw from experience of being a volunteer at the Huntington Shelter for a little bit more than three years. Sunday was our biggest day to have traffic and attract visitors to come in, and the adoptions were the biggest on every Sunday. Is the uh, Smithtown Advisory Board looking into that and making it possible for people to come in on Sundays? We are absolutely looking are and who we can who that is working at the shelter can work on Sundays yeah. that was actually one of the first things we talked about all right because I know Huntington does it Brookhaven mm -hmm. does it You're absolutely and others right. are on on course to do it and that's the biggest day absolutely for adoptions and the animals deserve that so I'm glad to hear it's on the board you'll advise us when it happens I certainly will thank you I hope it's in real soon well I think you're right that's when I would go adopt an animal okay all right thank you not a bad picture. Hello, everybody. A few things to start with. Um, it's well known around town. I don't have an iPhone. I use my flip top phone. People make fun of me. It's my choice. When I went to the shelter to take pictures of the cat poop that was out there a couple of months ago, I went and got my daughter's old camera. And when I went home, I found pictures of cats, lots of those 28 cats that were killed. Mm -hmm. And I'm never going to stop coming here and talking about those 28 cats until George Beatty is removed from office. I know public safety is doing an investigation, and I hope that you guys do the right thing, because if not, I'm going to rile up the troops, because there's only a few of us here tonight, because I'm still waiting for public safety to do their thing. Mr. Vecchio, that me, when, when you spoke, you clearly were stated that saying, there's ten, about 10 women wackos here tonight. Okay. So you were wrong to this other speaker. Okay. Just want to clarify that. Okay. The video is online and okay. also, you know, CBS News came to your office. So okay. To act like you didn't know about it is not true. I don't know where you okay. come with that from. Last we spoke about Mr. Jorgensen, that you, and you told me Mr. Jorgensen wasted $2 million of taxpayers' money by putting that thing down. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it's going to come out with the engineer report that it's okay. But he shouldn't have put it down in 30 degree weather. The state says 45 degree. Brought to your attention, you told me to write to the state. As the town supervisor. I don't think I told you that. Well, that I have, that, that's the state rules. That I have. Now, wait, 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 wait. You get up a microphone and you spout some words. Some are factual and some are not. So it's easy to say that I told you something which I didn't tell you. Okay. okay. You said you could not fire Mr. Jorgis and he's an elected official. That's correct. For me to write to the state to try to change that role. Or I the law. I, okay. It was the Tuesday afternoon meeting, the last okay. one. Good enough. <clears throat> why why can't you take the, the lead there? Are you like why can't you show that you're upset with Mr. Jorgensen instead of just saying, Well, I have no control over it? He wasted two million dollars of our money. You're but, the leader. People come well, to you as the leader. You're the boss. First of all, that's not necessarily true, true that he wasted it. We are doing an inspection of those roles to determine if, in effect, that money was wasted. It may prove that those roles are fine. It may prove they're not. So until that time, uh, that judgment is made, then we'll know whether the money was wasted or not. And so far as what I told you about Mr. Uh, Jorgensen being an elected official, that's a fact. The law is the election law is the election law. And so when I say the TR wasn't being flippant, the only people who can change the law is the 
New York State Legislature. And I don't think the New York State Legislature will change a law that exists for, I would say, for almost a century uh, because a town supervisor calls and tells them to change the law. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> last year when you had some issues up here about not signing the papers, I read that you were going to try to get rid of Mr. Playo's job. You didn't, we, we didn't need a town clerk. It was one of the local papers you wrote that. Now you I were mean, able to change... Wait, wait, wait. You know, you have to be clear on your facts. Did I indicate that the New York State Commission on Efficiency in Local Government recommends that the highway superintendent, the town clerk, and the tax receiver be appointed? Absolutely, I did. I misunderstood <laughs> what you said. Just clarify with, with, with the town clerk. Say that again? The town clerk, you said that we didn't need a town clerk. You were going to try to remove his job. No, I can't try to remove anybody's job. I have no authority. Uh, I saw something online about that. Well, I'll try Mr. Eric Banchek, it's wonderful that you have a mic, but you ought to be sure of your facts when you speak. I, I read it somewhere. I didn't <clears> just make it up. I will produce that, and I'll well, come back to the next meeting. Once again, don't believe everything you read in the paper. Well, someone, some paper quoted you. Okay. Okay. Back to Mr. Jorgensen. Why can't you lead? The, why can't you tell the state? Say, listen, if the state's, if this guy's going to make a mistake for $2 million, why can't we have recourse to sue the state then? Because we can't get, get rid of them. Well, I can tell you right now, it hasn't been determined it's a mistake. We are spending money on a testing company to test those roads. So it, as of now, until that result of the testing come back, there has been no mistake. You know, if the paper said there was, okay, and no even paper. And the world, Mr. Benchik, well, I'm not going to spend my time talking about Mr. Jorgensen. Even if it were a mistake, the town board has no authority to remove an elected official. Last time I spoke to you, there were people complaining about rats at their house. Have you gone by that house to see where the trailer is? Have you seen the trailer with the people that complained that after Tuesday afternoon? No, I have not. I did. I mean, why didn't you go there and take care of it? Your town supervisor. People come here okay. and you don't listen okay, to your nobody. Okay, time is up, Mr. Benchik. Mr. Daly? Gregory Daly? I'm a little concerned with the, uh, with the um, political climate that uh, Smithtown is embroiled in at this juncture. And, and particularly, I am, I'd like to address two issues that the town of Smithtown is engaged in. And it came to my attention by way of a uh, so-called verified complaint. Um, I understand that Smithtown is involved in what's considered a uh, Smithtown asset forfeiture program and their NCCI C, which is the National Crime Information Center, number is NY05-17500. And that's under the auspices of the Smithdown Department of Public Service. Is it still operational? Because as far as the federal government proclamation, uh, January 16, 2015, that program has been revamped. So I'm wondering if you're still engaged in that and that then slingshots into a program that I think and you'd have to confirm this or deny this, a program called the 1033 program. What is that program? It is the militarization of local law enforcement agencies. I assume the Smithtown Department of Public Service Safety is involved in this. And this is under the uh, National Defense Authorization Act. Um, by way of the Defense Logistics Agency Disposition Services. And what they do is they transfer weapons of war, war, to the local uh, law enforcement agencies. Now, my question is, what is the, t the town of Smithstone doing with hollow point or hollow tipped um, rounds and grenade launchers? Uh, that, that's, that's, uh, that boggles my mind. So I'm asking, is the town of Smithtown engaged in those two programs? The forfeiture program, asset forfeiture program, and the program 1033? To my knowledge, we're not. You aren't? To my okay. knowledge, we're not. You're not. And how can you verify that, other than your opinion? Well, we don't have any grenade launchers. Well, other, than the, other than that, how can you confirm that you're not? 
What documentations do you well, have, I have that I can inspect? I beg your pardon? Well, you can go to the town attorney's office tomorrow and you can review any documents that Perfect. That Therefore, perfect. Therefore, I have a FOIA request. I'll hand it to Mr. Fuel. Angela Russo. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good evening, ladies. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry about that. My name is Angela Russo. I am a resident of Smithtown Hop Hug for 40 years. Uh, and I was here last September during town meeting and about uh, the sidewalks where I live. Um, you have pictures. I've left pictures like this. They're documented. Um, and Mr. Ferguson, Jerkison, came to visit me. And he saw the, how badly the sidewalks were. Uh, I was here then to try to prevent this from happening. And this you all have seen because <coughs> it's documented. Um, I'm still foraging on doing my thing uh, because I want to correct all of this. And this is in front of my home. Ms. Russo, may I interrupt you? Yes. Okay. You know, at the end of the year, the sidewalk money runs out at the oh. end of the fiscal year. For the 2015 budget, sidewalk repair money is now in the budget of the town engineer, mm -hmm. and he's now been apprised. We sent a letter the other day. Did you send a letter to my office the other day with some photos attached? I believe you did. The other day, no. Well, I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, from These were sent September. Okay, well, somehow they appeared on my desk the other day. And actually, and the day well, that I came to the meeting, said, I handed them out to everyone so to we see. We will be repairing your sidewalk as soon as that season begins. Well, when, when I was here you, last year, I know that. But the, you, money, the first okay. words you said to me were, "There is money," and Mr. Jerkinson said that there wasn't. Oh, I, okay, I don't know that. And it's but no, you do new, because it's do, money, it's documented here. Russo, there is new money in the budget this year. Okay. The town engineer is aware that your your sidewalks need to be repaired, and he soon will do that as soon as. Okay, I do have a meeting begins. Monday with Mr. Riley. I spoke to him for 45 minutes on the phone this morning. Oh. Okay, so okay. I did speak to him, and I do have a meeting he with him. He did confirm what I'm telling you. Excuse me? He confirmed what I told you? Uh, no, he didn't say that there wasn't money. No, that he, the money is now in his budget for the repair of sidewalk. Yes. Okay. New, but new money. New money. New money. Yes. But my concern is, is that after Mr. Jerkinson is not here anymore, and now all of this has to go on again, if I feel like this is so important for the children that I watch for 40 years, and I Mrs. saw Russo. this happen. So I'm very concerned. Let's go back. Okay. Last year, you, you asked for your sidewalk to repair. Whether the money went out or not, Mr. Jorgensen did not get to it. Yes or no? Oh, he did. Okay, do, no, no, yes. He did. Fin he did fix this okay. part All right. where the little boy fell, and okay. he called it the money maker. Okay. And that's documented well, now, too. Last year. This year, the sidewalk repair money for 2015 is under the jurisdiction of the engineer. He's now aware mm -hmm. of that complaint that you made last year. Okay, I just don't want to be put through the system like Mr. Jurgensen has okay. to go through. Thank you. Thank you. Marie Thompson. Okay, I have a question about the shelter. Is it a 401c3, a trust, or is it a corporation? Can, can you answer me, Mr. Vecchio? No, no. I'd like that everybody addresses the questions to me like I'm just... Okay, okay. Mr. Julio, could you answer me, me or Matt? Could you answer me? me Is finish. that better? 
You want to know whether we are a corporation, a okay. trust, or a 401c3? I think we're designated. I'll have the town attorney. We're a municipality on New York State law. I'm sorry? We are a municipality under New York State law. We're a so what does that fall under, Matt? We're a municipal corporation. So it is a corporation. Okay, so <coughs> if George Beatty cannot be fired for drinking on the job, harassment, slaughtering animals, because he's in SAG, how about we get him for his handwritten notes for 30 years, which violates state and federal generally accepted principles on accounting, which makes his actions criminal. So could we take that into consideration? Anybody can, a can answer that? Mr. Vecchio. No, Mr. Vecchio can't answer because he's not a lawyer. The lawyer oh, can Matt? Yeah. But I don't know if he's going to answer it. Well, because so, under the so guise of being a civil servant, he can basically do anything he wants. But I would like uh, an accounting of his hand-kept written records of monies that have come and gone, um, donations, expenditures, um, including his salary, fundraising misappropriations, county and state federal tax Mr. credits. Thompson? Mm -hmm. I think if you make that request under the Freedom of Information Law. Right here. Well, it's okay. It's okay. right there. Okay. So if you know I have it. I'm just saying Mario, I have you're it. Right but I'd like some answers to my well, question. You won't get the answers until the, the public information officer gets that request and tries to you with the document. But doesn't handwritten notes for 30 years? regarding our money violate the state and federal accounting principles? You asking me that question? Yeah. I can't answer it. Well, Ms. Why? That's, that's why we investigate these items. Right? Where are we, where so are we at that? with this based investigation, on, simply Matt? Simply based on a statement that you're making at a, a board meeting that he has handwritten notes for 30 years that you find unsatisfactory, we can't simply use that it's as a basis for It's not acceptable, fire. Matt, handwritten notes regarding our donations to the shelter, uh, fundraisers. But that's why we investigate. We, we Where can't, are we, we can't, at? We can't simply just take what's said at the podium and act on it. I understand. Okay, so where are we at with public safety and this investigation? Like, is it ongoing? Are we near an end? Are we going to have an answer? It's ongoing. Still? Well, each week, you know, a different complaint comes in. So we're addressing okay. them as they come in. Thank you, Matt. And Vinny, Vin. Angel Zicano. Is that correct, Zicano? Zicano. Good evening. Um, I just kind of want to address the residents of Smithtown in um, the fact that I was able, uh, thanks to Ms. Nowick, to meet with her uh, on some of the issues of the animal shelter uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I expressed our concern that there was not a member, a resident of Smithtown on the advisory board, um, and Ms. Nowick was kind enough to allow me with a, a other few people to come in. And uh, she spent two hours with us Mrs. going Kano, over. Oh, OK, okay. yes. Uh, spent two hours with us um, going over in detail uh, some of the changes that are being made. I brought a list of questions, and I brought a list of concerns um, for, the, for the residents of Smithtown. And I am pleased to say that um, aside from the physical you know, uh, improvements, that there are a lot of inside improvements being made. Um, computer things, and uh, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on for the better. So um, although you know, we're still kind of back and forth with having a resident of Smithtown on the advisory board, I feel secure. Um, as a resident, knowing that Ms. Nowak, who's in charge of this overhaul, is um, accommodating 
uh, the residents in letting them know what's going on and um, in pr and taking our suggestions as well. I brought her a list of suggestions from, the, from some of the residents that had contacted me. And um, I'm going to keep hopefully having these meetings um, to keep on top of, of what's going on. Um, but it's, it really was generally all positive. So um, I just like to let everyone know. And um, I do believe that making the shelter a 501c3 is in the works. Just to answer someone's question about, um, you know, uh, corporations or, or anything like that. But anyway, just to sum it all up, I was very happy. Um, there are a lot of things behind the scenes um, as far as the animal shelter goes. I'm not here to address any issues with Mr. With Mr. Beatty. I'm just talking about um, the issues with the shelter itself. And um, things are changing for the better. And if anybody does have any issues that they would like me to bring to Ms. Nowick, I'd be more than happy to. But I'm sure she, her line is open for anyone to speak to anyway. So. so I'll just stop. I'll move to close the meeting. Can, Can I, I just, um, I, promised, I, I, I promised the um, public that I would make a little announcement as to what we are doing in the animal shelter, as I promised you. So uh, just a quick, uh, just to let you know, last meeting I told everybody I would come up with a little bit of a list. Uh, as you all know, I formed an advisory board with uh, Lucille uh, Dafina and Diane Madden and Liz Steen and uh, myself, and we have been meeting regularly to make changes in the animal shelter. I will tell you that Director Beatty does come into the meetings with us because there is no other way to work with the shelter unless you have the director there with you, and he has been more than cooperative. Having said that, I want to just give you a quick rundown of some of the things we have done. Uh, and yes, we did meet with the Smithtown moms, and we had a very good meeting. And you came up with some good ideas, and we were doing a lot of them too. <clears throat> so first thing, and this, Marie, this would address some of your concerns, uh, the creation of IT programs, which is absolutely imperative, I believe, in any department. And these programs are for identification for each and every animal to list, uh, to identify them with numbers, uh, to include everything about their background, whether it's medication, whether it's whether they're uh, neutered, how old they are, their personalities, anything a future adopted parent, if you will, needs to know. And that should be able to be printed and given to the future uh, adopted parent. And, and with that, Marie, so you know, comes also any type of money that comes in, donations, anything, goes into a separate line account. No cash is kept. Any money paid out is, is done computer. Everything will be on computer. There will be everything. There are no papers anymore. That's not being done. And we are in the process with IT of doing that. Um, and more of a cosmetic, the Parks Department came in a few weeks ago and cleaned from top to bottom, getting rid of everything that should not be there. The condos that were full of bacteria, all gone. Uh, everything ripped down certain things that were not appropriate. Um, we are working on policies and procedures which would uh, also address the situation of euthanasia. Uh, some of the things that are small but were mentioned for many meetings that we've gone to, now policies are cleaning of litter boxes starting at 8.30 and every two hours afterwards together with purchase of additional litter boxes, including the covered one. And John, the covered one was because you brought to our attention about the snow and about the cats that were outside. So that covered one is outside. The cats will not be doing that anymore. Uh, so you should not be able to take those photos anymore, hopefully. Uh, <coughs> cleaning of kennels every two hours. All bedding and wash washable items cleaned regularly so there's no bacteria infesting. Uh, <coughs> we did the bold and better. We have an Eagle Scout that has come in and has very kindly offered to build us nesting shells for the cat. He's doing an Eagle Scout project, which is very good for us, and we appreciate it very much. <clears throat> we have a creation on the website of an Amazon wish list. Through the Amazon wish list, if you choose to do anything for the animals or do give donations, click on show us what you want. It'll come right to the animal shelter, and we've been all already successful in that. <clears throat> I did an informative video um, on the shelter site, and yes, it is now on Facebook and aired on government access. And, and this is to foster adoption, to tell people what it costs, why we're doing it, what we have there. So it's a full uh, video. 
the separation of rooms for feral cats as well as uh, sick cats and well cats. Uh, all of those things have changed. <clears throat> we spotlighting animals in local papers and web websites for adoption and on our Facebook. So because, again, our mission is 100% adoption. And I, I must also take this moment to thank the advisory board who gives of their time as volunteers, comes from Nassau County and takes hours and hours and hours as we meet at the shelter and we go back to the, um, <clears throat> the um, town hall. I have to thank the town board because without the town board allowing money for certain things and for positions and we can't do it. I can't do it without the supervisor and the town board who, are been, who have been more than willing to do whatever it takes. I just, I, I just have to address <clears throat> the resident on the advisory board and, and I said there is a resident. I don't know who has a deeper interest in Smithtown or has more roots in Smithtown than someone, I believe myself, on the board as a resident. I will tell you I am born and raised here. My father was raised here. My mother still lives here. My father was a farmer here and a councilman for 25 years. My father-in-law was a councilman and a justice of the peace. I was a tax receiver. I was a county legislator. I am now a council person. I have an interest in Smithtown, and I will make, along with the advisory board, the town board, and Director Beatty, we will make that shelter the shelter that you are all looking for. And if you have any questions, as Angela knows, my line is open. I'll move, I'll move to close the meeting. Thank you. Supervisor Vecchio? Yes. Councilman McCarthy? Yes. Councilman Wareheim? Yes. Councilman Creighton? Yes. Councilwoman Noah? Yes.